Thank you so much for jumping on here and joining us for this conversation. Um, we're really, really thankful for you taking time to just be a part of this. And I want to personally encourage you to be a part of this. Um, don't just sit there. We'd love to hear back from you, your comments. You feel free to share this. Um, feel free to comment. Free feel to uh, have a conversation with as well. I'm really excited. We've got two pastors from Columbus here with me and um, really excited for this opportunity for us as pastors to represent the Columbus Church. Yeah. It's not about church in the wild. Um, I love my church. I'm thankful for my church. But we as pastors yeah. represent the church in this city. So I wanted to thank you guys. Uh, Rick, thank you for thinking of this. Yeah, man. And, um, Aaron, thanks for jumping here with us um, quickly and, and being willing to be a part of this. Yeah. So I just wanted to talk to you guys for a couple minutes about just the church and how we as a church, how we as the church, um, serve different parts of our city in this in this time and I was really comforted uh, I was reading the, the book of Acts this week and um, was kind of thinking I'm sure like you guys we've been on zoom calls with pastors mm -hmm. all over America yeah. we've talked to large churches small churches house churches mega churches yeah. and we've all been saying the same thing like this has never happened right so we don't really know exactly <laughs> how to handle this but there was a church in the book of Acts, who went through something similar, um, and they were scattered. Yeah. Yep. And I believe we're not stopped, we're scattered. Yeah. The church still goes on. You can't right. cancel church. Um, you may have different meetings or meetings in a different place, but you don't cancel them. Right. And so I took great comfort from the book of Acts this week as they, the, the church in Jerusalem was scattered, but they continued to share the gospel. Mm. And I think, if we're honest, this is an obstacle. Yeah. For, for pastors, it's True. an obstacle for business owners, it's an obstacle for small business owners, but God can turn obstacles into opportunities. True. And so, again, thank you for coming on here. I wanted to just talk with you about maybe some of those obstacles that God can turn into opportunities, mm. and I think he gives us wisdom yeah. to do that. So, talk with me really quick, Rick, first of all, Watermark Church in Worthington, yep. um, and Aaron Living Hope Church in Powell, Dublin. Are you Powell, Dublin both? So we wanted to be Powell, <laughs> okay, and then we planted in Dublin, okay, and now we're back in Powell. All right, there so we go. <laughs> we we planted in Worthington, and we are in. Worthington. You are in Worthington. That's right. Awesome. That's right. awesome. We're there. <laughs> so talk to me a little bit. Um, how do we find? It's very important that we are the body of Christ. Yeah. Mm. That we be the church right now. Yeah. So how do we, as pastors of church plants? How do we find and create opportunities to serve our communities around us? I would love to hear you guys' suggestions on that. Yeah, yeah you know, one thing we came up with and, and that we're, we're starting this week is this, because we're, we're trying to, like you said, serve our community, connect with our community still, and let them know, hey, we, we're there for you. Mm. And so we are, and we're starting in the neighborhood I'm in, and we are taking um, uh, uh, a card and a letter and we're going to different houses, and on the letter says something like, you know, we put together where it says, hey, we're, we're your neighbors, uh, we're from Watermark Church. N number one, how can we pray for you? We've given our email address because yep. obviously, you know, uh, some people are fearful to come or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then number two, though, we're also asking them, hey, what can we do to help you? Meaning mm -hmm. that, do you need someone to go to the store for you? Yeah. Do you need someone to do this for you? Or, or that we can go and help serve. Sure. But then we're also attaching uh, a Hershey bar, a giant Hershey right. bar to it. Because <laughs> yeah. number one, just by looking at me, you can tell that, man, I, I love Hershey bars. Okay? <laughs> so, but, but what we're saying is, hey, during this time, man, enjoy yeah. something sweet on us. Because mm, yeah. I, I want them to walk away seeing that, man, the church really is there to help serve. Mm -hmm. I love how you said, Jason, that it's not about mm -hmm. our individual churches. Right. We are the church. Right. And, uh, and, and I love how we've come together mm -hmm. and, and that we can show the community that, hey, we are in this together. Yeah. And, and, and it's not about, hey, come here, come there, but it's about that. So, you know, that's one way that we're trying to look at, hey, connecting with our neighbors mm -hmm. yeah. in the neighborhood and stuff like that. And, and so we're, we're, expand, we're, gonna, we're starting my street and we're expanding and we're asking our church members uh, to do the same oh, with them, that. you know, in, in their neighborhood. So, uh, it, you know, we'll see how it goes. Now, people yeah. may look at that, but uh, again, I'm hoping we get some emails that they say, "Hey, can you pray about this?" Yeah, right. You know, or, or pray about their job, mm -hmm. pray about the, with their family, because a lot, you know, is going on, or even, you know. So, I mean, that's that's one way yeah. that, that we're doing. So, I, I think that. too, it's interesting. I know in our context, and I'm sure you guys are similar. Um, we have a unique opportunity to invest not only into our cities, but into our schools, into mm -hmm. our food pantries. Yeah. Mm -hmm into those that serve less fortunate in really all of our contexts. But what's interesting about it 
because I don't think they need us quite yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I know like in our school system where our church meets and even the surrounding school districts, um, they have a really good plan in place to meet the needs of children um, when it comes to breakfast and lunch. And mm -hmm. I praise God for that. Like, yeah. Yeah. Some of them are, you can come to a drop-off point. Some of them are sending school buses on routes and they're dropping foods at bus stop. Incredible um, things that they have going on. But that can only be sustained for so long, I believe. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, what happens when summer hits if this continues? Yeah. And so I think as the church, too, just for us to go ahead and make those bridges and say, look, you may not need us yet, mm -hmm. but if that arises, we're here for you. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we talk about that often in the lives of, of people in our community. They might not realize necessarily they need the church yet, but the, mm -hmm. the day will come, yeah. potentially, mm -hmm. where they need the church to step up and be the church. Mm -hmm. um, so just for us to just even just relationally build connections with people. Mm -hmm. um, someday they may they may need us, and we're going to be there for them. Yeah, which I think is huge. Yeah, yeah. What are you, what are some things that you're doing, Aaron, at Living Hope to, to try to help out, or some people maybe you're reaching out to saying, yeah. hey, in the future we're yep. here. Yeah. So one of those, uh, City of Powell, is obviously a huge one for us. Uh, we work very closely with an organization called Dublin Bridges. Um, so we're even in conversations right now. So our school district has breakfast and lunch covered for these mm -hmm. kids. Awesome, mm -hmm. uh, but they're even just thinking too. If if this extends beyond three weeks, again, we don't know what this is going to look like. Mm -hmm. um, man, just even providing snacks for these children. Yeah, could we come good. into a neighborhood with a box truck full of goldfish and granola bars, mm -hmm. and just pass these things out to these kids? No strings attached. Just we love you. We want to help you, whatever you need. Mm -hmm. um, so we're doing stuff like that. So even just encouraging our people. We sent an email out yesterday. Hey, if you go buy a box of granola bars buy two yeah yeah keep one aside because there's going to come a day in the next week or two where we're going to need that and we're going to call on you for that so um simple things like that we've offered up our facility mm -hmm. um you know if anybody needs to shoot any kind of videos whether that be a church or an organization mm -hmm. um out and you know if they don't have the equipment to do that man, come use our space god's blessed us with it mm -hmm. it's yours um so yeah i think all of us are still trying to navigate how this looks yeah. you know i told my wife today it's only been six days since this came out. <laughs> and so it's forcing us to be creative, mm -hmm. but also I think we have to play the long game. Because yep. even if this is a short thing, the effects of this is, are gonna ripple. For yeah, to come. that's good, that's so, a good word. Important. You know, another thing we're doing too is Worthington Food Pantry. Mm -hmm. We've connected with them. Mm -hmm. uh, just going and we're gonna go and, and help put food together yeah. that they can take to places and stuff. So, yeah. you know, like, like what you're talking about, is just being prepared yep. and being ready, you know, mm -hmm. that this, because one day, hopefully they'll they'll need us, yeah. you know. What, what are you guys doing at the Church in the Wild? Yeah, we're doing a couple different things. Um, one thing I'm really excited about, we just went and bought two deep freezers, and oh, we said to people, idea. hey, anything you need to store, yeah. um, because like, we don't know how long this is gonna last. Right. If this goes into the summer, we want people to know, you have a place where you can mm. store your food, yeah. where it's safe, where yeah. we're gonna take care of it, where you can come get it if you need it, um, and you don't have to fight crowds. Yeah. Right. Um, another thing is is just reaching out to our nursing homes. Um, mm -hmm. We have some some workers in nursing homes, and so they're kind of giving us the opportunity. Um, I think I've said this before, but I've heard a lot of people callously say, "Well, it's just the children and the elderly," mm -hmm. and that word "just" just mm -hmm. bothers me yeah. so much because yeah. I'm like. Well, when you're elderly, do you want someone to say yeah. just, just about yeah. you? Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're trying to really reach out to nursing homes and That's let them good. know like, you're not alone. Amazing. You're not you're not forgotten. We're yeah. here. Um, and if that means we call you, if that means we email you, if that means we write you a letter, right? We'll do whatever we can to facilitate that. Um, and also, yeah, I mean, we've reached out to our city and our schools, and I think it's it's similar yeah, probably it's for similar. us. Yeah, um, very much so. They don't need us, and I think we should be thankful yeah. um, that our cities are prepared, they're prepared. Mm -hmm. and they're generous and yeah. they're kind, yeah. and that's awesome. Um, and then, you know, I think another big area of need yeah. in in this right now is you had families who um, kids were at school, mm. mom was at this job, dad was at this job, yeah. kids were at games, and now that whole family is at the house, right? And they're trying to figure out. What do we do? How do we do it? How yeah. do we get along? China, Italy, suicide, and yeah. divorce rates shot through the roof during this time. Right. So how do we, as pastors, mm. how do we serve the families that are in our church? Yeah. Um, what are some practical ways that we can say, hey, do some of these things, yeah. and we want to help? So yeah. Maybe yeah. you guys have ideas on that. Yeah, so we've really been thinking through some of this. Um, 
and just a couple things that we've done kind of off the bat, I think we have a unique opportunity like we're seeing right here to provide digital content, virtual content to people, live content, whatever that looks like for each of our churches um, on a regular basis for folks. Mm -hmm. And so even Lifeway, if you guys are you know familiar with some of yeah. their stuff, they released like incredible kids ministry content last week that's mm. totally free to churches mm. and so we've got that stuff linked up on our website every Sunday so parents can watch a little video with their kids and then print off this discussion sheet that's just so well done mm -hmm. um, and it's helping parents disciple their children yeah. you know and helping them walk alongside their children and maybe even some cases like helping them do something they've never done before right and so I think Jesus can redeem this in a yeah. great way yeah um, that's a great thing we've even tossed around the ideas of maybe once a week releasing like a Hey, here's 25 ways you could serve your next door neighbor mm -hmm. this week. Mm -hmm. Here's 25 ways or 25 ways to engage with your children, mm -hmm. you know, in the next seven days. Just, again, it's all formative and fluid. Mm -hmm. um, but just, I think the church has this unique opportunity to provide resources yeah. to people mm -hmm. um, that are specific to maybe what we do in each of our contexts mm -hmm. that you know, I think are going to be helpful. Yeah, you know, so. I think I think with along you're saying it, there is the stuff we can send out to our families and yeah. and get them connected, you know, in a sense to the Word of God with each other. But I think a, a great opportunity that parents have here too is that when you when we do something for our neighbors or we do something for our community, mm -hmm. let's involve our kids. Yeah, okay, to mm -hmm. where our kids see uh, an opportunity to serve. You know, yeah. what I'm saying and, and tell them why. Hey, this yeah. is why we're doing it. Right. And not not that we're just doing it. You yeah. know. Uh, but but having them understand that, and it doesn't matter the age of your children. Mm -hmm. You know, if you got young young kids or if you got teenagers, right. get them involved in, in in this opportunity to to see Christ move. Mm -hmm. You know, because I think I think when they when they see the parents serving, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. I think that's a huge testimony to your kids. Yeah, sure. You know, and and I just think too is that, and again, I know we could sit here and go. You know, hey, you need to do this, this, and this, and this, and, and some parents are out there going, yeah, but you know, I got, I got six kids, and they're all, <laughs> yeah, they're all underneath. You my know. kids have been home for two days, and we already had to institute like the no fighting. Yeah, show. yeah, right. <laughs> I, I can't yeah. imagine. For you. <laughs> that's right. So, that's right. You're, that's right. That's a good. We're sorry, sorry babe, if you're watching this. You're gonna have good. a swear jar. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Tell that's right. Good. So, my when, vacation funds. Yeah, there you go. Man, it's going crazy. <laughs> you know, but but I think I think also look for opportunities for parents to sit down with your kids and and do some activities like you're talking yeah, about yeah. that we can share with with that and and and, and i know you got to work or you got to do different things but be intentional mm -hmm. during this mm -hmm. time yeah. because really god i know this sounds weird when i say this but we have an opportunity mm -hmm. to invest into our kids yes. okay yeah. and so now you granted my kids are, are older they're you sure. know they're you know uh I can't remember the ages, but they're older. But anyways, but um, and, and they're watching. Sorry, but uh, <laughs> but they're older. But even when they're older, I mean, connect with them, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And so I just I, we're looking to, to, and we're a brand, you know, we're brand new. We yeah. we launched January twelfth, so right. yeah. <laughs> this thing is, yeah. you know, so we don't have a whole lot of little kids. But I want to help our families that have those little kids to say, right. like you're saying, sending them stuff. Be mindful of this and asking them, hey, how can we help? Yep. You know what can we do to, to help you and sure. uh, and how can we pray for you and your family and and and, and everything? So I, I just think it's a uh, an opportunity to do that, you know. And so um, and and I know Aaron and I were talking about that day. He's like, man, we already and did this, you know. Mm. And and I get it because we're used to the kids being in school and yep. and, and everything. But mm. again, this is an opportunity to invest into them, yeah. Yeah. you know, um, as parents. Yep. And and my thing is this: if parents say okay how 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 do i do that what what then then reach out to your pastor reach out yeah. to your church reach yeah, out to right. different things to say yeah. hey give me some ideas mm -hmm. that we could what we can do to do that yeah. you know and here, here's important too i was just thinking in scripture matthew 12 right two greatest commandments love god and love mm -hmm. your neighbor as you love yourself yeah, yeah. um the, i think sometimes the reason you know we read this in different seasons of life but i've, I've really been honing in on that love your neighbor as you love yourself mm -hmm. and i think something we've seen recently um, in our culture just in the last six days is this idea of self-preservation yeah mm -hmm. it's yeah. the reason people hoard things it's mm -hmm. the reason i get angry if somebody infringes upon my territory yeah and so as parents and as christians um, we have the opportunity to really live this out mm -hmm. where we take the self-preservation and press it back That's outwards yeah. Yeah, yeah. to yeah. other people and that could manifest itself to my neighbor, mm -hmm. but even closer to home, my spouse and my children. Yeah. 
where even though maybe I'm tired, I'm stressed, uh, maybe there's a different demand on my life, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to choose to love them mm -hmm. like I would love myself. That's good. And press that back out towards my family. Mm -hmm. um, and so just really modeling scripture for our children, yeah. even during this, is going to be key. I love that. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's good. That's challenging. Thank you for <laughs> preaching to us, Aaron. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Take my last that's right. right. My that's right. right. <laughs> uh, I love it. And, and Rick, I the idea of taking your kids to serve your neighbors, mm -hmm. I think, is is great too. Because because of this, we've seen, sadly, almost unprecedented amounts of selfishness. Mm -hmm. we, we've all seen that on the media. We've all seen it on yeah. on whatever digital form we're watching whatever you know um and for our kids to be able to see us and to be able to serve with us yeah. and go to a neighbor and say we've got a hershey bar for yeah. you um i think that speaks to them volumes probably probably more than we'll ever know yeah I agree. and I agree. so yeah i love that i think taking um your children taking your kids your kid mm. who can wrestle josh is a wrestler right yes and, um, yes. So you're probably not going to be wrestling him uh, well, I, I pin him. Okay. Oh, no, nice. No. <laughs> Dear Lord, no. He's six foot. He bench pressed 300 pounds, so <laughs> I do not wrestle him. So That's, that's nothing, right? That's nothing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's right. But, that's I mean, right. you can take them and serve, yes. you know, neighbors. And, and I think especially it, it also shows that, listen, we want to have wisdom. Mm -hmm. We want our families to have wisdom. Mm -hmm. But we're not afraid. No. Right. And so there's a there's a big difference between wisdom and fear. Yes. Right. And we've got to teach our kids the difference between wisdom and fear because they're not going to learn that in society. Exactly. So. Exactly. I love that. Um, what about this? What about ourselves? How do we, mm. how do we serve ourselves? In I don't know about you guys. I haven't got off my phone for the last six days. <laughs> yep. um, in this in this video, I've received a bunch of texts. Yeah. Yep. Um, and. You know, just trying to care for people who you know are, are just needing cared for. Yeah. Um, something I'm struggling with is then how do I make sure I'm healthy enough to help other people be healthy yeah. right. in the most unhealthy time in our history? Right. Um, so I would love to hear input ideas. I think yeah. it's something I really need to work on, and I'm sure many people watching do as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I know, so for me, uh, one of my pastors from a few years back used to use this old phrase, what's in the well is going to come up in the bucket. Mm. Um, I think it was a southern phrase. He yeah, was that's kind of, definitely he was southern. Yeah, I love um, that. You know, but the idea is, you know, I, I can't pour out what's not in me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we even see, you know, in Scripture, Jesus modeling rising early in the morning to spend time with the Father before he would go and do ministry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not the best morning person. I hate getting up early, um, but we still have to do it. Yep. And so I think in what we do, that could be one of the best habits for us to develop is I'm going to rise before my children, mm -hmm. right? Because at the end of the day, we're spent. Mm -hmm. In the morning, we're going to be a little bit fresher. Right. Yeah. And so I'm going to rise before my children, before my wife, and I'm going to be in the Word primary. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to, I think physically, we need to take care of ourselves, mm -hmm. right? Because when we're stressed, I'd prefer a ho-ho mm -hmm. over a smoothie. Yeah. Preach, right? Right. Um, <laughs> you could even the ho-ho in the smoothie. It, we could. <laughs> that so. itself. We could. <laughs> Uh, but even just physically exercising, they closed the gym, yeah. right? So this is yeah. the apocalypse. Yeah, like, I don't even know what to do. The end. Bro, I've been in my basement doing, like, CrossFit. Yeah. Like, you know something's going down. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, this is terrible. Um, but just prioritizing that, I think, be the first part of my day. Because mm -hmm. right? that's going to set me up for the rest of my right. day. Right. And so don't wait till lunch. Don't wait till nighttime. Mm -hmm. The first thing I do, I'm going to give the first part of my day to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because then I'm going to be able to pour into the people that need me the rest of the day. Yeah. Right? So we're just following the example yeah. of Christ and the Gospels, I yeah. think, with that. Yeah. You know, I, I agree. With, you know, you you got to make sure spiritually you're taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Spending time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I even, I, I challenged our people last Sunday, hey, you know, don't be uninformed, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But put your phone down, yeah. put the news away for just a little bit, yeah. okay? And spend time in the Word of God, mm -hmm. you know. And and really, my my life verse is Proverbs chapter three, verses five and six, mm -hmm. and it says, "Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He'll direct your paths." Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, we trust in Him, we rely on Him. But the only way to trust in Him, rely on Him, is to spend time with Him. Yeah. And so renew your mind every day in that. Okay. But the number two is 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 Aaron's right, and is is working out. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're healthy. Now I am. Out of the three of us here, I am the, the most unhealthy. Okay, um, but I know I've got it. I've got to eat. I got to sure. eat right. I got to sure. get healthy and stuff. Matter of fact, we were joking tonight. My family before I came, 
and we're we're doing. I was going to do some things with my my daughter and my son, stuff like that. And my son said, "Dad, listen, I'll do it with you um, if you work out with me every night." Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "Okay, that's what mm -hmm. we're going to do." Now yeah. he's going to kill me tomorrow night. You know what I'm saying? And, and, <laughs> and it, but I need to do that. I need we need yeah. to take care of yourself physically also because you're right Jason if we're not taking care of physically of ourselves how can we help others right. and be an example to others right. um, you know so it's renewing your mind it's taking care of, of, of yourself and uh, and that helps us to be mindful of others mm -hmm. and as, as you said er earlier pushing ourselves away and yeah. serving serving others so yeah it's just uh, spending time in that and and um, and doing things around your house because you can't you you said man they closed the gym in the apocalypse when they said my gym was closed i was like yes the gym, <laughs> the gym is closed man we're not right. you know but you know but i realized that man i gotta have that i, yeah. I gotta do that yeah. you know yeah. so you know what yeah. are you doing yeah um uh, our gym is closed as well um I've started running outside as much as I can. Jason does CrossFit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, <laughs> I we I eat a you whole can lot send, of CrossFit. If, you, if that offends you, you can email me. It's Rick at Watermark. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you know. Obviously, you have to be spiritually healthy. Uh, we, we just finished a series called Planted where we, mm -hmm. we said something similar. You said you can't pour, pour out what's never been poured yeah. in. And if you don't have a counselor if you, or a mentor, if you don't have scripture, if you don't have time with God, um, however that looks for you, if you don't have that time, yeah. you're not going to be able to help other people. Yeah. And I, th I think the verses you read um, were really fascinating. Lean not into thine own understanding. Mm -hmm. The temptation right now for probably everybody yeah. Yeah. is to figure out what the right amount of knowledge is. Yeah. And so we're just trying to lean on our own understanding by yeah. consuming countless mm. amounts of hours yeah. worth of information. Yeah, that's good. And at the end of the day, we have to trust God. Yeah. yeah. No, you're right. We hmm. definitely want to be informed. We right. definitely want to use wisdom. But I think the worst thing you can do is binge Netflix, mm. eat bad food, and be on social media all yeah. day yeah. through this time. Yeah. I, I just, I think that's going to lead to worse habits later on. Yeah. And yes, this is a virus. So is laziness. So is anxiety. So is fear, panic. They're viruses yeah. as well. Yeah. And I think they can they can get there. We can get there quickly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, for me, um, I I'm a mover. Um, it's the reason I like CrossFit. I cannot hold still. Mm -hmm. uh, if you watch this, you can tell. Um, <laughs> So I've got to run. Yeah, sure. um, and so while I'm running, I'm praying. That's good. And I've had to stop at times and text someone because all of a sudden God was like, hey, what about that? Mm, yeah. um, and so it's very important to me to be able to be out. And I think for families, if you're watching this, and we talked about serving families and all that, take your kids for a walk. Yeah. My parents did that every night, mm. and our family is still very close to this day. Yeah. Um, I think it's it's just super helpful. Yeah, Go yeah. for a walk. It's great. Together, work That's out great. with your kids together, do things like that, yeah. and then um, the other thing is, as pastors, I don't know how you guys have had. Um, I've been blasted for not having a service. I've had people who don't come to our service attack me for not having a service. Sure. So at some point, as a pastor, just minimizing the critics. Yeah. yeah. Um, because it can get to me. Yeah. I mean, completely honestly, criticism can get to me. Yeah. 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 And so I don't know how you guys go about that. No, you got to block it out. And then, and I think so too is this. Um, you know, as pastors and as churches, we also set the example of, of, of I don't want to say obeying, but listening to our government officials mm -hmm. and showing the respect to them. Mm -hmm. And the aspect of this is do what they've asked us to do, wash your hands, other stuff like that. And do what they've asked us to do and be part of the solution right. and not the problem. I mean, all three of us would say, we want to meet yeah. on Sundays. Yeah. Okay? I mean, I'm not waking up on Sunday going, man, I got to throw a day off, you know? <laughs> no, I'm waking up going, man, I wish we were meeting. Yeah. But but we also need to be smart and to help our people yeah. and, and help our city, yeah. you know? And so I, I agree with you. You're mm -hmm. going to have to block them out and, and, uh, and just to... Now, we're so new... You know, no one said anything to me. You know, what I'm saying so, and now I'll probably get something. You're gonna get something now. You're on here. Your email. Yeah, 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 that's right. And so, but you know, it's just it's just being mindful of that, yeah. and and uh, and and doing the right things. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying and, and showing that hey, we're honoring God. 
by honoring our our, our, our officials that lead yeah. us yeah. and praying for them, right. yeah. praying for them. Yeah. You know, so you yeah. know. Yeah. No, I, I, there's really not much I would add to that, right? If we're if we're called to lead the church, right? Titus talks about that. Mm -hmm. We're overseers of the church. We need to be honorable. We need to be um, above reproach, mm -hmm. and that means in in every asset of our facet of society as well. Mm -hmm. um, Romans 13, yeah. one says to obey our governing authorities, and mm -hmm. so um, even though we're quote exempt from this, right. wisdom tells us to obey that. Right. And right. if we're going to love our people well and shepherd our people well, mm -hmm. then we do whatever we can to protect them. And a part of protecting them is obeying our government mm -hmm. in the midst of this. Yeah. And so good. we're just we're doing our best to shepherd well. I love that. Um, yeah. It's important. It's good. Yeah. Uh, so lastly, let's talk about just opportunities to share the gospel within this current time. Yeah. I'm, I'm torn on it. I, I, I recognize people are beginning to think more about God than probably ever. Mm. And at the same time, I have seemingly a harder time having the conversation. Rick, you were talking to me earlier about someone you shared the gospel yeah. with, and I love that. So maybe you guys could tell us some ideas, opportunities, or maybe just things that you've done to share the gospel with people. Yeah, you know, I was telling you earlier that I was at it in the store, and I won't name the store, but I was at the store, and the lady that was running the register when I when I was checking out, I just simply asked her, "Hey, is everybody being nice to you?" You know, <laughs> just trying to start a conversation. And she literally looked at me with a, just a, a frown on her face, and she said, "No." She goes, mm -hmm. "People are jerks." Okay. And so the Lord just really, I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, "Hey, you just need to share share mm -hmm. with her." And I just said, "You know, I apologize." And I just start sharing the gospel with her. And at first she was like, do you work in retail? And I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a pastor. Yeah. And at first she's kind of like, oh, oh, really? And, and But through the conversation, I was able to share with her about what Jesus has done for us. And just very quickly, now she didn't get saved, but let me tell you what did happen. She thanked me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when I left that she saw the church in a different light yeah. because I was kind I was encouraging, but I also shared the good news of Jesus with her. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think wherever we go, to be kind, mm -hmm. and, and 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 to be and to and to look for the opportunity to share. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you say, well, was there anybody behind you in line? And uh, and there, luckily there wasn't. There wasn't nobody behind me. So I, I took that advantage. Mm -hmm. um, and and like I said, she didn't she didn't get get saved. She didn't receive Christ. But I was able to plant the seed. And so I'm just saying, man, look for opportunities to do that. You know, wherever you go, gas station, you know, at the, the store, uh, you know, in your neighborhoods, other stuff. And that, that's why I'm giving that letter out to our neighbors to say, hey, how can we pray for you? Yeah. How can we and, and hopefully have an opportunity to share? So that was one way that yeah. that I was able to, to share the gospel, you know, with with someone that I came in, in contact with. Right. I love him. Yeah. So so part of what I do occasionally on the side is I do DoorDash. Yeah. Um, so the other the other night I was at this Wings place in Polaris waiting on an order, and there was another DoorDash lady that came in, and I think we have a unique opportunity as the church right now to really tap into to brokenness. Yeah. Right. Because mm -hmm. we know that what's going on in the world and this virus is a result of sin and brokenness yeah. in our, our world. Right. right. But we know the remedy to that as well as the gospel. It's mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so it is amazing where you ask somebody a simple question: What do you think about all this? Mm -hmm. And sadly, this lady had suffered from an immune disorder, and so she was terrified mm -hmm. yeah. in that yeah. moment. And so it was kind of a quick interaction, but just being able just to say the words, man, I'm so glad that we have hope in Jesus. Yeah. I don't know what the Lord could do with that. We didn't get to the gospel in that moment, but, but we can tap into brokenness right now mm -hmm. with people and point to the remedy for brokenness, yeah. which is Jesus. Yeah. Second thing. Jehovah's Witnesses are still out and about. Right. They came right. to my house the other day. Right. Uh, they kept six feet distance, right, to obey the rules. Uh, <laughs> but they asked me if I knew Jesus. Yeah. And I said, I do. Do you? I mean, we got to walk through the gospel in yeah. my front yard. Yeah. And so, look, there's an opportunity to even witness to Jehovah's Witnesses yeah. now, yeah. probably more than ever, because yeah. they're going to be the only folks knocking on your door. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. And you got all the time in the world. <laughs> so take advantage of it. I think it was good what you said where you asked that lady, hey, what do you, what do you think about yeah. this? Yeah. Just ask people. Start Dude, a conversation. Like everybody's got an opinion too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 If you're not gonna see it on Facebook. They'll tell you about <laughs> it. So yeah. Don't be afraid to ask. Yeah. We did when when I started hearing about all this virus and you know businesses were shutting down. I have to admit, selfishly, my first thing was to get in my Jeep and go to Starbucks, mm -hmm. which I was like, boy, if they're shutting down coffee, I got to get some. Right. <laughs> and you know, so I, I I headed to Starbucks and I got in line and there was a car behind me. And I just offered to pay for the person behind me. Man. And the girl was like, dude, that's really nice, especially right now. And I said, well, we all need coffee and Jesus, especially right now. 
And I kid you not, she looked around and she went, thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, like it was so, yeah. so cool. <laughs> I think right now we have a unique opportunity to share the gospel as individuals. Mm -hmm. We've relied too, too long on that pastor is going to get up and he's going to talk and my friends will get saved. Yeah. And now we have this unique opportunity to say as people to people, yeah. we get to be the church and we yeah. get to share the gospel yeah. too. So, yeah, yeah. Um, one little addition to that and just an encouragement here too. Um, I, I would say Sunday was probably one of the largest gatherings of Christians mm -hmm. in the history of yeah. our nation, yeah. just with social media and stuff. Um, leverage these platforms during this time too, right. man. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be sharing these videos, but man, if you have a Facebook page or YouTube, right. Uh, right. you can share your practice sharing your testimony in right. three minutes and right. post it. Right. I'm seeing more church services, prayer services, testimony videos in the last six days than I think I ever have on social media. Yeah. God is using this yeah. if Christians take advantage of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I love it. That's good. Uh, anything else you guys want to add before we're, we're wrapping up? You know, I think the last thing I would say is, you know, this Sunday I'm talking out, out of Luke 5 where those four men lowered the paralytic man to Jesus, yeah. okay? They looked, for an they looked for an opportunity to get their friend to Jesus. Mm -hmm. I think we just, like Aaron said, look for those opportunities mm -hmm. to serve and to be the hands and feet of Jesus, you know? So I, I think that's, we, we just got to be mindful of that. Absolutely. You know? yeah. Absolutely. Aaron, what about you? No, I guess Rich's talking about what he's talking about Sunday. At our church, we're talking about 2 Timothy 3.16. All scriptures inspired by God is yeah, profitable for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So we're equipped for every good work. Um, and my just encouragement would be, uh, as Jason said a minute ago, sometimes we run to Facebook, we run to the news sites, we go on to Twitter. Um, run to this book yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Right? So, so my worldview is going to be shaped by what I put into my mind and my heart. Yeah. And so if what I put in my mind and heart primary is the Word of God, mm -hmm. I'm going to have a different lens by which I view the world mm -hmm. and, and even see hope in the midst of crisis that's because good. Jesus is bigger, Jesus is better, um, and, and we have a greater hope yeah. in Jesus. I so, love that. That's good. I'm going to make us all run. Yeah, <laughs> man. When we get off this video, we're taking a lap. <laughs> Rick, you want to pray? Um, yeah, man. Up. Let me pray for us. Yeah. Hey, thanks for hosting us yeah, today, absolutely. man. It was great. Let me absolutely. pray. Absolutely. Father, we bow before you with grateful hearts, and Lord, we are so grateful for Jesus and for the cross and for salvation that we get because of that. Jesus, thank you so much for that. And uh, I pray that you would help us, Lord, as Jesus followers to be the church, and that, Father, we would be the hands and the feet and the mouth of Jesus. And we would look for opportunities to, to serve. We would look for opportunities to share the gospel. Uh, we know we're in a unique situation, but Father, give us your wisdom. Uh, guide us and direct us. Lord, not only as pastors, but Lord, as, as church members and as churches, Father. And Lord, as Jason said earlier, the church. Mm -hmm. uh, help us to be that, Lord, here in Columbus and Ohio and the United States and even around the world, Father. I pray you'd help us to do that. But Father, we do ask for your protection. We pray that, Lord, you'd give our our, uh, our president and our, mm -hmm. our other, our governor and other city officials and leaders and give them wisdom, Father. That they, as you guide them and direct them, and Father, help us to have your wisdom as you lead and guide us. Mm -hmm. And Father, I pray for this uh, this coming week and this coming Sunday that Lord, it would just uh, be an opportunity, uh, as we said earlier, for you to be glorified. Mm -hmm. And so, Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for this time. We sure do love you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks, Amen. guys. Thanks, guys.